In this video, I'll use the Chrome SDK plugin to author a new animation effect. This is the Chrome SDK REST client version. So first thing, I'll go to the example prefabs and click on the connection manager. Just make sure we're connected. If not, I can just disconnect and reconnect. I'm thinking about making a fire effect. To make a new lighting animation, we're going to need a prefab. And there's a couple of ways to do that. All right, so the first way is just select an existing asset and control D to duplicate. And then once you've duplicated, you can rename your effect to whatever you want. Cool fire animation. And I usually prefix it with whatever type. So it's our keyboard cool fire animation. So since we duplicated, we've got all the existing animation frames. And I'll have to remove those. So I just hit the delete key until they're all gone. And now we have a fresh animation with one frame. The second way to make a effect animation is to create one from scratch. So you can use the game object menu, select Chrome SDK, and 1D animations are good for the headset, the mouse pad, and Chroma Link. 2D animations are good for the keyboard keypad and the mouse. So since I want to make a keyboard animation, I'll want a 2D animation. Okay, and that creates a effect in the scene. I'll just replace the effect name with our keyboard cool fire animation. And then you can just drag this down to the project view. And this will automatically create the prefab. And if I save the prefab, I can delete the original game object since we don't need it and loading the scene and then selecting the prefab should it should still exist which it does okay so here we go we have a blank animation and we want to create a fire animation here's our cool fire animation we're set to keyboard it's a 2d animation 2d animation is going to be for keyboard keypad or mouse if i switch to a different device and hit set they have a different number of frames, like mouse is a 9x7. If I switch back to keyboard, it's a 6x22. So when you use the drop down, you want to hit the set key and that will stamp the device type on it. All right, so now that we're in keyboard, we have our default first frame. Uh, this grid here represents the layout that you see down here. So if I hit preview, I can see what we've drawn on the grid. You can toggle the labels. And uh, this, this grid, it represents the keys down here. So I've got the current select color is red. I can click on the different grid items and it will paint that color. And then when I hit preview, I can see the effect in the emulator. And also there's a keyboard shortcut. So if I hit shift, it will also display the preview. All right, so uh, let's go through these buttons. Play will play the animation one time. Stop will stop if you're in the middle of playback. Animations before they can be played, uh, you need to load. If we try to play when it's already been unloaded, it will load it for you anyways. Unload will unload the um, animation so that it has to be loaded before it's played. And previous preview. Okay, so then there's some other useful things. Uh, clear will clear the grid on the current frame. Fill will fill the current selected color. There we go, make it a little bit bigger. So we can see here. There we go, now we can see the, see the current selected color. So there's brush color. Uh, this is a color field, so you can click and pick your color. Another cool feature is this little eyedropper where you can drag it to a web page, pick the color that you're hovering over until you click. All right. Uh, there's a little palette down here to switch between the different colors. Here you have the grid, so you can click on individual grid items, or uh, you can click top left is also a fill, or yeah, the top left is a fill. 
Uh, you can click on individual columns and fill the whole column. You can click on the rows and fill the individual rows. Random randomly generates colors. Copy will copy the frame so that you can paste it back. Contrast turns uh, are things that are a little bit brighter than gray white, and anything darker than gray turns more black. All right, so saturate and desaturate are similar. Desaturate turns colors into gray. Saturate turns gray colors into your selected color. And then darken will darken things out, which is useful for uh, doing fade outs in your animation. If I go to random again, uh, shift does a wrap around. And shifting down will go downwards, left is left, right and up for the shifting. And then for keyboards, you can select individual keys by name. Uh, this whole inspector actually can be resized so that you can see the, the full spellings of the names. There's this label that can be toggled when the labels are off. Do a little tooltip is around where you're hovering. I've started to prefer the labels being on. You can select a key using the drop down. If you don't want to hunt for it, you can scroll through this list. And then set will set that key. And then there's also a logo. So a handy thing if you just want to set the logo to a specific color. Now, when I'm creating this animation, I can hide some of these things from the layout. Oh, I was looking for the, the set key, but it's, it's just right there. Okay. I'll make this a little bit bigger to do some of this other stuff. Okay, so then there's also the animation part of things. So when you're creating an animation, you typically have more than one frame. So you can uh, set a key, and by default, I've got a single frame, and you can see the duration of the, the frame there, which defaults to one second. If I add a frame, I have two frames, and when you add or insert a frame, it duplicates your current frame. There's also uh, previous and next buttons, as well as you can hit left and right on the keyboard to switch between frames. For add, it's plus on the numpad and minus to delete a frame. And uh, to create a little animation, let's just hit shift right, and then you can hit plus, which duplicates the frame. Shift right, plus shift right, and do this uh, to create a few frames. And now we can play back an animation. Okay, and it's all defaulted to one second, but you can override this by using this override time. So when I use override, it goes through all the, the frames and it will set their time to whatever this float value is. And this is in seconds. So now all the frames are 100 milliseconds. And if I hit play, there we go. Okay, and now that you know that there's shortcuts for these buttons. I can actually hide part of this so that I can see more of the emulator here. As well as uh, I like to collapse the transform. There we go, that makes more sense. Once the transform isn't really used, but all game objects have transforms, and so that's why you see it there. Okay. So uh, there's some more keyboard shortcuts, like uh, as you're filling out these frames, I set it to the Alt key, will automatically pick up the color for whatever frame you're hovering. Let's uh, import an image to see uh, how that's more apparent. So you can import 
bitmaps, JPEGs, and PNGs as a static image. There we go. And you can import an animation, uh, a GIF animation. So that'll import multiple frames. So now if I hit, uh, let's override the time and play it back. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and now without Alt, you can just hold it down and hover and pick whatever color you want in the grid. And then Shift to preview whatever frame you're on. And uh, now if I go back, now we can author some content. Um, I've got this, the time field focused. There we go. All right. So minus will remove the frames and now we're back to a blank canvas. Let's do an explosion animation. Okay. It's time for a fire animation. All right. So let's start with some gray area. Okay, and I can switch between frames with left and right. Let's go to the second frame and do a little white. Red. Okay, so I'm really just switching back and f between frames using the arrow keys, and also you can push shift, and that'll preview what you're doing. So I'm starting with that, and I did red there, and maybe use alt to pick the color there, maybe. Okay, alt again. Trying to do a little smoke or something. Okay. I fill in more smoke. All right, not bad. Okay. Um, just keep expanding. Head. Okay, another frame. He isn't really used, at least not in the emulator. Can you can play back with the play button. And the frames are defaulting to a second. Like I can switch it to faster. Okay. Another frame. Now, you can use some of these other tools too, like just randomize everything and then I could just saturate it to red and see if it grows to blank everything out. Okay. 
just fill in the colors. Okay, and there's some other useful things like darken. Then clear on the last frame. We said all the animation frames be fast and play. There we go. That works. Okay, so this little video on using the editing tools in Unity to edit Chrome SDK animations. And now that we're done, if I switch back to a uh, tall layout, there we go. Okay, so here's our cool fire animation. And it's saved into a prefab. And then, you know, always file, save project. So you save your prefab changes and we've made a little fire animation and thanks for watching.